I've been listening to head punch, uh, head punches all day. I've been telling, I've been, I've been telling motherfuckers they baby mamas' bare feet look like work boots all goddamn day. <laughs> uh, celebrating K Reno, you know what I'm saying? That's one of the coldest lines to start off the song to me. <laughs> yeah, your baby mama's feet work look like work boots. Yeah, that, that dude is crazy. <laughs> the bare feet. Talking <laughs> all you gotta do is listen. Hell yeah. <laughs> He's got a full yeah. catalog of music that I don't even know how many albums we're going to find out when he comes on. But also, uh, you know what I'm saying, he, he's got a lot of stuff up on YouTube you can go check out. Um, and, of mm-hmm. course, you can go buy the albums. But there's there's many great songs that you can, if, if you want to introduce yourself to him for the first time, then you get on YouTube and just, you know, type in K-Reno and, and uh, check out some of the Hey, Prez, let, 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 let me say this, too, before we get K-Reno over here. This, this, this I'm explain how cold K Reno is. A lot of motherfuckers like Scarface. They they if they make the Mount Rushmore, I didn't see the pictures and the memes and shit on Facebook. They got who would be the other person in uh on this Mount Rushmore? I would put K Reno on the Mount Rushmore of of the hip hop simply because I know people are gonna say who is that, and when you tell them who it is, they're gonna have to dig and they're gonna have to dig and they're gonna have to dig to find it. But this is the reason why I say it, though, a little bit. Not only because we know how, how you get down. We, we've been supporting this shit. We've been fucking with it. Perez, he even gave you a shout-out on one of them songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, K, that's how slick K is. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, like, I, 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 I Mr. Shocked. Wizard, man. You know what I'm saying? I was it was like when we was kids, that. we watched Mr. Wizard. But he this is the reason why. That. I seen an interview with Scarface, and people regard Scarface as one of the best hip-hop artists of all time, whether it was in a group or solo. Scarface, yeah. Uncle Face, Rap a Lot Records, all of that. And Scarface said it was a couple motherfuckers 
that you never asked to be on a song with you. And they was like, well, what are you talking about? And he was like, you know, it's a couple people you never asked to be on a song with you because they're going to murder you on your own song. Now, he was like, if they ask you to be on one of their songs, then, you know, it's good because then you know that they respect you enough to put you on one of their cuts. But he was like, you never asked K. Reno or Eminem on one of your songs. And a lot of people, yeah. okay, obviously, they know who Eminem is. But then they say, well, who is this K. Reno cat? You don't want K. Reno on your song because he going to murder you on your own fucking song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you don't, you don't ask K. Reno to be on your song. You wait till K. Reno asks you to be on his song. Yeah. And, and here yeah. is somebody like Scarface. It's like, wow. Because everybody, you know, and Scarface one of the rawest motherfuckers of all time, too. Yeah. No disrespect, he, but it ain't too is. many people holding a candle to K. Reno on them lyrics, bro. I don't give a fuck well, uh, where they from. Face, face um, you know, uh, I, I get where he's coming from. But if, and, you know, I, I would want to work with K. Reno. I would tell you why, because I would want to up my game. Because you know you're going to have to... You, when you mm-hmm. have to have to bring the absolute best that you got. Everything in your fucking arsenal. Um Right. It's not But yeah, see the thing sound, the thing the thing with them dudes is yeah. like Mike and them. They would never act you know, Mike would never team up with Jordan to uh be the best. So like it, Scarface couldn't be as he is without a K Reno. That's how yeah. I looked at it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, he could ask him to be on there and he could have put him on but Man, he finna kill. He finna kill a motherfucker, man. Well, let's see how. Okay, he did deal, the, man. Here's my challenge to the best, quote unquote, supposed MCs in the game. Here's my challenge mm-hmm. to you. Let's see how good you are. Get K. Reno on one yeah. of your songs. You know what I'm saying? I'm, ta- exactly. I'm talking to. I'm talking to Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to uh, uh, Mortal Immortal Technique. technique. I'm, I'm talking, talking to Tech Nine. All of these motherfuckers that think. Yeah. Uh, uh, Put K. Uh, Reno on a song with you. Everybody, yeah. man, everybody that, that, that's got some type of, of lyrical ability, you know what I'm saying, you know, get at this, man. Get him on the track and uh, make it happen. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it, it'll be good for hip-hop. It'll be great for hip-hop because oh, you're yeah. going to get you're gonna get some, some real good music out of, you know, people that, that want to see these types of collaborations. Right. And um, they need to know about K. These, these cats, they need to know about K. They need to know about K. You can't talk about hip hop without K. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like absolutely. And he stood the test of time too. Seven albums in one day, Press. Like who would ever That's thought nice. that? I remember when you first told me that shit, I was like I never doubted. I was like Are you at first I thought I, I read it wrong. I think you texted me, uh inboxed me the first time, like you didn't believe me. Seven in one and I was I'm like gonna, seven in one day. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you where and I you heard was like it from. seven in one day. I'm going to ask him this question right now, if this is him, because I'm going to tell you where I, I kind of figured out a, uh, uh, this might have been coming. K. Reno, how you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, my brother? What's yeah. going on with it, K? Uh, same old, man. Just pushing. You know how it go. Stay the pushing. Hey, right. We're sitting here Ooh, just tripping on the seven albums because uh, it's, just, it's never been done before. Has it been done in any genre of music, K.? Man, the closest I heard, I heard of a guy recently that had did four, and I don't, I can't even remember what what genre, what style of music it was, but he did mm-hmm. four, and um, uh, somebody sent that information to me. I don't remember his name or anything, but nothing close to that, nothing close to that in rap, R and B, rock and roll, whatever, or even the um. Independence undergrounds because you know I, one thing I do know, I know that a major a artist on a major label probably wouldn't be able to do that if they wanted to. Just the way the majors are set up, they're not going to release that much mm-hmm. music on artists at one time because they want to milk milk an album or a particular album. Right. Right. But even in the underground, I'm yet to see it or hear about it. So you know, I think I, I think I, I'm I'm swimming in um. And uncharted waters right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, why, yeah. why, why, why seven albums though? That's well, what I mean, like why seven? Well, I, I'm I'm not a believer in coincidence, but mm-hmm. what did happen was that in the in the beginning, the original idea 
was 100 songs. It wasn't based around a, a number of albums. I was like, I'm going to do 100 songs. I'm going to drop them on iTunes or whatever. And, um, but then I started thinking about the breakdown in terms of saying, okay, how many albums would that be if it was 100 mm-hmm. songs? I put maybe 14 on each album. That's how the number seven came up. Which and then, wow, okay. then, 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 then Muhammad was like, man, seven, that's the number of God, man, that's right on. So it was like, yeah, you know, so I, <laughs> I don't think that was a coincidence that, that the seven came up, but I just fell back mm-hmm. off of the 100 because once I started writing, I was like, man, I ain't writing 100 songs. So I, I broke it down to 12 on each one, and so we got like 84 songs all together. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. That is, now, I saw a post of Facebook hey, you, post you made. I'm about to say, yeah, a you're a motherfucker, boy. <laughs> and you said, I, I think you said that there's some of the effects of, if I put out a box set, would you support it? Is this what you yeah. were talking about? This was like a year ago or so. Or no, maybe six actually, actually, that was that wasn't even the idea. That the box set post that I put up, I was just talking about like a best of of my old best stuff. Of, mm-hmm. Okay, you know, uh, and 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 mixed in with some new stuff in, in there. But um, at that, that time, so nah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I still plan on doing that, but um. At the end of the day, nah, it it wasn't based around this idea, even though I did come up with this idea maybe around, it popped in my head for a second over a year ago, you know, but I just, I dismissed it real quick. The only difference is this go around is that when it came back into my head, I acted on it. I didn't, I didn't cast it to the side like I did the first time. Hello? That's just, uh, can you hear me, Kate? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, that's just it's just crazy, man. Um, the homie Brandon, uh, we're going to bring him on here in a minute. He's talking about uh, E-40 uh, released <clears throat> four albums on one day. Now, you're going right. three albums above that. Uh, e Forty is a workaholic, as we know as well. He's got a huge uh, catalog of music. But seven albums on one day, that's like your average rapper entire discography on one day man, and how did you pull this off that's funny that that whoever sent that to say e40 that, that makes perfect sense because i could i could totally picture e40 doing that you know that's like like you say he's he's that kind of artist man a prolific artist like that but i mean really man I, I, now that i'm on the, the the tail end now that i'm on the other side of the work Man, I really don't know how I did it myself, man. You know, I just thank God for the will and the motivation and the concepts mm-hmm. and the the patience. Those are all of the elements that, that, that was required to do it, man, because it was just a bunch of nights where I was just like, man, why did I even start doing this, <laughs> you know? But um, that's what it was, man. And, and I'm more thankful for the concepts because, you know, the hardest part of songwriting is not writing the song itself. It's coming up with the concept of what you're going to write about. Mm-hmm. So just the fact with the with the social climate that we're in and all of the different things that's going on in the world, that kind of added a lot of, um, you know, motivation of things to talk about mixed in with the right. normal things I do with lyricism and storytelling. So the, the framework was in place. I just had to fill fill in the gaps. Yeah, hell yeah. Because I, I was just about to say that, like, uh, you you pretty much answered what I was going to ask you. It's like, because uh, you got so much material out there. Like, does it ever come a time where you almost run out of content? But with, no. with the social and the stuff that's going on today, it's like it's ever last amounts of uh, information and stuff that you. So it's almost like as you get older, you get. It's almost better. Like, you're one of the great storytellers of our time. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I look at it. Uh, I appreciate it. Now, I mean, you know, you don't run out of stuff to talk about as long as you stay tuned in to your surroundings and what's going on in the world. You know, if you kind of block that out and just kind of 
don't pay much attention to it, then you'll find yourself in a place where you feel like it's nothing left to talk about. But if you feed information into your mind, whether you reading, whether you uh, watching TV, which a lot of, oh, man, TV is BS. You know, it depends on what you're watching. So, right. I mean, at the end of the day, man, things evolve. On this project, mm-hmm. you're going to hear me talk about a lot of the same stuff, but just in different ways. And, and I'm talking about, you know, the social, political, conscious type of stuff. You know, you'll hear me speak on police brutality in several different ways. You know, you'll hear me speak about the government in several different ways. You know, there'll be different songs that cover the, that under that umbrella, but I'm touching on other aspects of it. So it just depends right. on how you open your mind up and, and and approach it when you're sitting down to write. Yeah, hell yeah. Because you and do and got a lot of a lot of material. I'm gonna tell you what, uh there's some, some technical issues going on. So we got about an hour. We originally had seven songs, but you sent us uh or we were going to do seven. I jumped the gun. I'm sorry about that, Kay. That's what I put on the cover. But you sent us four songs, which uh, I'm hella grateful that, that you uh, allowed us to preview these songs on our platform. I'm going to go into the first one. This one's called uh, Raising the Bars. Tell everybody about this one and uh, where it's from. Yeah, man. You know, that's just the basic standard punchline type of song, man. You know, you see people say Raising the bar. But since I'm dropping these bars, I put the S at the end of it. We raising the bars, you know. So just having some fun, um, dropping some punchlines, doing what we do, man. Just giving the people what they accustomed to to hearing me do. Right. I, I was just about to say, well, at least, at least if the mumble rappers, uh, if they listen to it, well, shit, you, you can see that you don't have to mumble. <laughs> you actually spit your words out, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe somebody might actually feel you, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all, you, y'all keep showing these motherfuckers how it's done, man. I'm always, I'm, I'm always appreciate that, man, for real. I mean, well, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to come up in the era that I came up in. You know, I think that mm-hmm. a lot of us, you know, are in every artist, most artists are products of the era that they came up in. So by me coming up in that golden age and seeing this thing basically from the beginning all the way up to the the great lyricists like the Rock Kims, the Big Daddy Kane, and et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, I'm rooted in that. So, I mean, we just products of, of the era we come from, and and, and consistency is, is, the main, is my main ingredient. Consistency of right. quality is my main ingredient that 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 I use moving forward on every project. So, you know, if anybody wants to know the formula, that's it. Yeah, and that's a dope ass formula because uh, a, a dope formula of being consistent has cats like DJ Premier saying he can scratch it off his bucket list that he met K Reno. You know what I'm saying? Man. Like, what's that like what being that able mean? to get like accolades from a uh, Cats, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what uh, world world now revered as such as yourself from other parts man, of the country. It, it, it's crazy, man. It's a blessing because you know I respect guys like DJ Premier. I respect David Banner, and and you know just guys who have at times you know got at me and, and showed me love like that. And there's been many more of them. So I mean, mm-hmm. it's a it's a it's a testament, you know, just to I feel like the work I put in and, and to try to never cheat the game. But, um, you know, I also have to reciprocate that same love and respect back to those guys, cause, you know, because they OGs and, and people who influenced me as well. So it's crazy. Hey, um, the homie Sinister, uh, Lord Sinister out of France, um, he wanted me to ask you this, Kay, uh The album, The, Wizard Ran- the Wizard's Ransom, uh, he wanted to know uh, the, the the image concept behind the cover. Um, the, that's one of the seven albums. What's what, what's the the concept behind that, Kate? Well, I can't give it away too much because it's it's based on the song, the title track, you know. 
But uh, that's the only thing. I, I, if I went too much into detail, I would kind of give a, give it away because that song is a part of a uh, recurring theme and storyline on uh, like three of the albums. You know, so it goes deeper than that, and I don't want to go too far into right. detail on it and give it away. <laughs> So basically, you gonna have yeah. to buy it, motherfucker. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm you gotta get it and check it out. Yeah, that, that, that's the straight, that's the straight up version of it, right? I, I gave you the diplomatic, but it, it boils down to buy an album and find out. <laughs> a shout out, shout out to my boy Sinister, man. He been holding it down for us a long time. Man. Oh yeah, shout out to him, man. man. No doubt, no doubt. And you know, and you know, and you know Sin gonna buy it too. Sin gonna be able to get shit out that motherfucker. Well, Already, man. Much love, bro. Uh, <laughs> but let's get. I want to give this to them a few times before uh, we get out of here tonight. But if they want to pre-order the album, um, what's the best way for them to do it? The best way for them to do it right now um, is is to uh, get through PayPal. But just send me an email. You know, that's how I've been doing it. Just email me at s p c k r i n o at aol dot com. And um, just just let me know in the email that you're interested in, in purchasing the new albums, and then I'll email you back, you know, sometime before that day is over with, with the order information, with the, the um, details on how to order. And um, it's that simple. Just S-P-C-K-R-I-N-O at AOL, and I got you. Seven albums. Seven oh, yeah. albums. Now, now, would, do you have a release date for for uh, the, the box? Is it a box set or seven individual albums for it? it it's seven. It's seven individual albums. We we played with the idea of a box set because um, uh, the homie Steve at So South, who was uh, uh, one of my distributors, um, came up with a great idea. He was like, "Man, we need to do like a limited edition box set and make the the box make the box itself, the case itself, look like your black book." Um, yeah, but, man, that would be dope as hell. Yeah, but to <laughs> customize it and design it, it was going to be real expensive. Um, I still had a few people to kind of reach out to me that was like, man, I can do it. I know how to put it together. So we still, it's still in the air. We just got to figure out how we would do it. And worse come to worse. Or you, or, um, or you could uh, just make some limited editions, and then if you really want to fuck with them, just, you know, make like 100 of them, and only 100 people get the. The box said, "I'm gonna be in that motherfucker." Me and Prayer are gonna be right in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Don't I think about the in there or something. No <laughs> doubt. I mean, we um. gonna put we'll put all kind of stuff in there, man. We'll have a um a, the the, the Jack in the Box pop out or something, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but I mean, the official the the release is gonna be is gonna be this Monday. You know, I, I, I wanted it to be tomorrow. Oh wow! But um, but it's gonna be this this coming Monday. Um, on, on iTunes and the physicals will start shipping out Monday. Monday the 14th. So, that's yeah, wow. no question. No question, man. That's man. huge. It's, it's coming up closer than people think. I mean, it, it's coming up real yeah. fast. So we got to make sure to go out and support that. Uh, let's give them another one. This one here is Exposing the Motive. I love this track. Uh, tell them about this one, Kay. Intro this one for us. Yeah, some of the people that are just tuning in, so I'm going to try to get this interview everywhere. Um, who invented horrorcore? Because there's always this big, you know, uh, <laughs> big. There's always this big battle about okay, this guy started it, that guy started it. it. From your perspective, who started it? Well, I mean, anybody that knows me, they know what else is coming. You know, the inventor of horrorcore is none other than Gangsta Nip. You know, Psycho Nip, Brother Nip, whatever name you want to refer to him as, Nip is the originator of the horrorcore style. And the reason I say that is because I've been knowing Nip 30 years. And mm-hmm. as long as I've been knowing Nip, this is how he rapped. <laughs> I mean, we we 16 and 17 years old before Nip had ever released the record. And this man was talking about snatching the veins off your arm and using them as his shoestrings. <laughs> these, these are real right. lines that Nip said. This is, a, this is an actual <laughs> line that he said. When I battled Nip, he told me he was going to snatch the veins out of my arms and use them as a shoestring. 
you know, as a shoestring. So, I mean, this was in 87. So, it's, it's nobody else that I could pick out that I could say was rapping like that. He just, it's just, it's nip, you know, hands down, man. I mean, right. he, and, 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 yeah. and it's no disrespect to nobody else who, who who's a hardcore rapper, but he's the king, you know. He's he's the pioneer of it, and he's the greatest at it because when he when he's at his most extreme, there's nobody who's more extreme. <laughs> and, right. and he yeah. and he has he has so many dimensions to how he he orchestrates his hardcore style. It's not just blatant. Slashing and killing. If you really listen to other songs that he does, it's it's, it's, it's dimension. Yes, yeah, intellectual serial. Ki- I mean, he's the greatest man. So, yeah, I, yeah. my answer was long, but it all boils down to three letters, and that's nip straight up. Yeah, hell yeah, real talk, real talk. Um, yeah, another thing I wanted to go back in time a little bit on. You had this uh, uh, epic battle that everybody talks about with jukebox. Um, right. What was that like, man? Describe that encounter. Well, I, it was. It encounter, was, it I say was like a, it's a fight. <laughs> <laughs> it almost was. I think one time it was. It was two. It was two. Two situations that, if I'm remembering right, man, you know, shout out to Jukebox, man, because that's my brother, man. I I got number love for Jukebox, man, because I just think back to them times. You know, he was a warrior, man. I mean, with the first my first encounter with him. He came up to my school. Him and Raheem, I think they came up to my school looking for me. You know, they had just got on rap a lot and they was doing it and, and, and they showed up, they had the run D M C Dookie Ropes on, man, and they was like, Man, some dudes looking for you. I was in class. So when class let out, I walked out into the hallway and there they was, man. They was clean as a whistle. You know, I'm a little Dirty little grubby little kid, man, you know. But right. they was already had on brand new clothes, tennis shoes, gold ropes and all that. So they was looking looking the part back then and I was just so wild and crazy back then. I was like, Man, let's do it, let's do it now. But a teacher ran ran them off the camp well told them they had to leave the campus and, and ran me back to my class, like, Y'all gotta go And um so I'm filming. I'm in class just hot, man. I'm aggravated. Right, you ready. Right, you ready to let go. I'm ready, I'm ready to jump out of school to find them. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, right. um, I, get, I think I got to, like, fourth period, and somebody came and said, man, they still up here. You know, they let me know that they were still on the campus. And to this day, my English teacher, man, I, 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 I got so much love for this guy because – I blamed, I just straight up asked this guy, could I leave the class? And for some reason, mm-hmm. man, you you know, you the teacher. You ain't supposed to just let some student leave the class to go participating in some something <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with school. He let me leave, you know, and right. I went to first lunch. And when I got to the cafeteria, man, that it was, you know. And mm-hmm. so it was like everybody knew me, and they knew what I did, and they saw them, and it was like, man, I don't know what's happening, but – we getting ready to see it. And I backed up into the corner because we always battle rap in the corners or hallways or wherever room. And I backed up into the corner of the, of the hall and the, the, the cafeteria. And they came up, approached me. So we standing faced off. And when I tell you, it seemed like the whole cafeteria started just coming in a wave, just into trying to get into this corner, man. It was like something out of a movie. And, uh, right. And when, when the teachers and the staff saw all, all these kids, like just congregating like that, they came over again, and this time they actually ran them off um, from the campus. But we ended up battling again at the skating ring, this this uh, legendary skating ring that used to be out here in Houston, man. And it was actually Jukebox and um, and Bushwick. I don't remember if Bushwick rapped, but um, we we squared it off on, at that point, you know. So I mean. <laughs> You know, those, those were just some classic, legendary times, man. And, right, and and that's and crazy, crazy that your English teacher out of all the out of all yeah, the different classes, man, your English yeah. teacher with the words and the reading and everything said, "Hey, you know what? Take on ahead and go out there and, and let them boy, break and, and, boys and, off." And, and it was funny because he didn't he didn't strike me or come across as the kind of guy that would do that. 
until he did mm-hmm. it, you know. I don't even know what gave me. I think just my anger gave <laughs> me the, the, the nuts to even ask him to let me leave, you know. I was like, man, right. please let me go get these dudes, you know. But um, it, it, it was just I'm, I'm so happy, man, that, that, that I participated, you know, in the game at that time because, you know, I, I got so much respect for people like Jukebox, man, because – you talk about artists that were true to the art form, uh, and that's what mm-hmm. it was, man. We was battle rapping, man. We you know they 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 was they had just put their record out, and I was just getting ready to put my record out, or how I think I had just put mine out. I don't remember, but at the point of the matter is, we didn't care nothing about the record. We was like, man, we still down here in these trenches trying to prove right. supremacy. You know who's the best right. MC. You know, and even though they was on rap a lot, was signed, had music out, they were still trying to get out there and prove they was the hardest MCs. So you got to respect that, man. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to bring up. Man, uh, I wish I could have been a homie. I wish I could have been a homie. Man, look, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm, I, I, I came up with an idea about two weeks ago, and, um, and, and, and I'm going to do it either in text or – a, a video form or both, and it's gonna be called K Reno Stories, and 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 I'm gonna have other people to tell these kinds of stories. It, man, I got so many stories like this. It's crazy just from my days, you know, my battle rapping days, and just coming up in the game. And I mean, it's some crazy mm-hmm. stuff that people wouldn't believe, had believe if I told you. This, I mean, he's exaggerating. That's why I was gonna like I'm gonna get other people. That was there, right? <laughs> to tell these particular stories, just, just so people would even believe this. Some of this stuff that I went through actually happened back in the days. Man. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a must. Hey, we got the homie Brandon. Uh, he was actually able to stay on the line before uh, everything got cut off. Uh, you there, Brandon? Yeah, I'm there, sir. Yeah. Um, hey, this hell hell of a off, man. Seven albums. Great. It's insane, man. Hey, Reno, man, much respect to you, man. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Uh, oh, thank you, know, man. Thank you so much. What I want to know, man, is with these seven albums, you got Brother Nip coming out with an album coming soon. You guys planning on doing any shows or anything like that? Yeah, man. You know, we we do a lot of shows anyway. You know, we always performing. Um, but um, I think the biggest complaint that a lot of our fan base have is that we we don't we we're not always performing in their area. Like it's people that hit me up from different cities and states. When you coming here, when you coming there, you know, and the thing is, man, you know, we just I'm a one man operation. So I don't have I don't have a booking agent, I don't have a publicist, I don't have people who kind of book me and get me in those areas. So you don't see me everywhere. But we we planning on doing a lot of shows, man. And and me and Nip getting ready to do an album together. That's been long oh, yeah. overdue. Yeah. So we oh, yeah. that's we we starting on that in January. You know. So I'm gonna put that out there right now. Um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy, man. Straight up. Shout out to Nip at all Nip, times, man. Uh, you're gonna start working on it in January, you said. Right, right. We're gonna start on that in January. Okay, so it's dropping on 27th. Okay, hell yeah, it gives no us something else to look forward to. I mean, but it's gonna take us uh, a year or two to set up these seven <laughs> albums anyway. So uh, <laughs> we can look forward to that. Yeah, I'm getting them jump. But uh, let's, let's go into another song. <clears throat> we got um, this one here is Flash Backwards. Tell everybody about this one. Yeah, man, that, that that song is just basically just me just uh, just going back into my mind, man, taking it from where I am right now, going all the way back to the beginning, man. You know, you you, you have you have thoughts and regrets and in your life, you have parts of your life you're proud of, and you know, it's just me just covering that whole spectrum of my existence, and I'm flashing. Uh, I was the only child growing up. <laughs> uh, you know, so you got, you got to figure out how to. So you got a vivid creative. imagination, huh? Yeah, yeah. You got a vivid imagination. You you come up with ways to create and um and and, and entertain yourself, man. Um, I'm a big sci-fi Twilight Zone fan, man. So you know, I'm I'm influenced by by those types of shows, man. And um, 
So I get a lot of inspiration from watching Twilight Zone and, you know, just I try to come up with twisted plots and ideas, yeah. throw people off. They, tra- they travel with me all the way, all the way, and you think we're on this one track, then at the end you see we're on another level and just mess your head up at the end. So I, I love I love doing yeah. that. So I say, man, you're a great storyteller, man. Like if uh, what they say back in the days before they had radios and, you know, all, everything get uh, told in stories, like you would be right. classified as one of the greatest storytellers of our generation. You know oh, what I'm man, saying? And, and, like, that's why I'm glad you on here because for, for a lot of people that don't know, they can get these opportunities to hear what you do and what you've been doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't just – K. Reno ain't no new artist for you listeners out there. Right? Yeah. He's been, he been around the block a few times, and he still got that heat for you. Oh, that's man. what's so refreshing it's, about it. It's a blessing, man. I mean, you know, the storytelling, you know, it's a lost art in rap music. Um, you know, I, I came up listening to the Slick Ricks, uh, Scarface, you know, all these great storytellers, man, that, that are, are truly, you know, the great – storytellers and rap history man so you know i i don't never want to abandon that that component of writing you know because it's, it's lost man you just don't hear it anymore on albums man so uh i'm, I'm always give you that and then try to open your mind and, and make you and, and, and put it and put a tv in your head while you're listening to the to these songs man straight up yeah you seeing it painting vivid pictures Exactly, exactly. True definition of an artist, man, where you can yeah. you can hear something and it can take your brain somewhere else. Like man, you can envision man. it, you can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it, you know what I'm saying? Like that's yes, it. Sir. It's a great story because it's like when you're sitting around at campfire, you know they to <laughs> say something corny at the end to try to scare you, but you still wanna get into it. Like you don't wanna believe it they're gonna do that and then when they do it you're like, Oh, I knew you was gonna do that. No, you didn't. You didn't know that. You just right, saying right, that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's how right. I feel you gotta, when you, I listen you, to a lot of your songs. You know. You, you know gotta, what I mean? You gotta take. You gotta take the listener on a, on a trip, man. You know, and 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 yeah. just like watching the movie, man. You want to be taken on a journey, man. And and then you re, you free yourself to allow the person that's telling the story to just take you, man. And it's like you hope at the end that the the place that he takes you that you you glad you went well even if it even if it's like you said if even if the end scares you even if the end kind of freaks your your mind out or even at the end it puts you in a place of like wow that was cool you know you want that you know so i mean i'm always uh bring that element of writing to all my projects always yeah oh yeah yeah everything you do you know what I'm saying is uh is bar none, man. It's uh it's real talk. I've known you at least since ninety five and I've heard right. your music since the early nineties. I never heard you put out a whack verse on anything. You always dedicate to your craft and to your ability and you always give to the fans. I salute you for that because a lot of artists have lost their way over the years. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, oh, yeah. forth to, and, and you remain on it, man, and you know, real talk, much props. Man, I appreciate y'all, man. It was the, the the thing to that, man, is it's like in the end, I tell artists all the time, man, you have to always remember that you representing yourself and your own name and your own reputation anytime you get down and do so. I hear I hear rappers all the time. They do features and they may say, Well, man, this guy didn't pay me but such and such amount, so I'm not gonna give him the full of me. Well, that's going right. to affect on you, <laughs> you know, exactly. because the fans who listen to these songs, they don't know the details of y'all's business arrangement with the guy you featuring with. All they know is mm-hmm. they're hearing you, and they're a fan of you, so they're like, oh, I can't weak on that one, you know. And, and I don't right. claim to say, well, man, every song that I get on, I just smash and kill and destroy every track. But the effort is always going to be there. You best believe when I sat down, I put down my best effort because I'm going to be judged on that, period. Right. I'm going to say, well, man, you know, K came weak on that, okay? He did his thing on that. So I'm going to give you my full effort, man, uh, whether it's, if I'm rapping with some unknown guy that nobody has ever heard of and nobody will probably ever hear the song other right. than his homeboy, I'm going to still give my fullest. 
You know, because I'm right, representing I, me. I heard you on some raw, uh, raw shit with uh, what's old boy named Fred? He, he was on the show too. Uh, Drastico, Drastico. Yeah, I heard yeah, you on some yeah. raw ass shit with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. man, K, K put it down for him. So like, for a cat like Drastico, he could be like, man, look, this dude went all in for me. You know what I'm saying? Like that. that that's that's what I like, and I think I think that's a testament to y'all. Like you said, representing like the whole yeah. SPC do that. Whether you hit point blank or you hit nip. You know, right. all of y'all put it down like that for years. You know what I'm saying? We all of y'all. That. And see, in Drastico, you know, we started off, you know, as a business relationship, you know, and and then we end up becoming partners. You know, Drastico, that's my boy. You know what I'm saying? So now we, right. you know, but 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 I think that just having that mentality gives you that kind of respect from people because they recognize it too. They look well, you know, what K got on my project and he gave a full effort, you know. I do mm-hmm. I've done a lot of features, man. I mean a bunch of features and there's never been a time in my life where I've given somebody given two people the same verse, you know, or I try right. to cheat the game and and, and slip this guy a verse I, I already had or something like. Now you may you may hear similarities in the verse, and that only comes from the fact that I've done so many that just human nature right. kicks in like, wow, okay, man, I, okay, I kind of right. said something like that. But it's it's everything I sit down, everything I get on with anybody else, I sat down to specifically and exclusively create that for that person's project. You know, so I take pride in That's that. Dope. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. Hell yeah. For y'all listening what? out there, man, when y'all looking for features, man, you're going to get, you know what I'm saying, you're going to get the real deal fucking with K, man. You ain't going to just get All some day long. recycled shit. You know what I'm saying? Never. You're going to get some real shit. So fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? Why we not? Gotta, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's been real, K. We got to uh, we gotta get up out of it. But before we go, um, if they want to get features, and it, definitely if they want to get these albums, uh, give them the information one more time. Yeah, just email me at S P C K R I N O S P C K R I N O at a o l dot com. When you're emailing me, I'm about the the uh, the albums. Just basically, hey man, how do I order the new albums? That's it, and I'll hit you right back, and I'll send you the information, man. If you want features or anything, you can you can email me for that too, or you can just contact me on Facebook or Twitter. And um, you know, like I like I said a minute ago, I don't have no team. It's me. So when you hit me, you're gonna hear from me. And um we'll work it out, you know, if your 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 bread is right then we'll make something happen, you know. It's all it's all good. It's all love, man. Thank you, Kay. Always a pleasure and always an honor to have you on the show, man. You man, take care it's of yourself. An honor, man. Congratulations. Y'all take care of yourself and I thank y'all man for giving me a platform always, man. And you know, uh you got a oh, great yeah. show. And y'all keep it real, and y'all don't y'all don't tolerate no BS, and that's what I respect about y'all, man. Y'all play the real and and and, and represent the real. So hit me anytime, family. Man, thank you, thank well, you. Okay. Take care of yourself, man. Uh, yes, sir. We're gonna, and we're gonna end the show with this song, Trifling. Tell everybody about this song before uh, we leave. Oh yeah, well, I took it back to the hood on that one. You know, it's like that's just basically just talking about individuals who are just that. They trifling, man. Some of the some of the, the ratchet, low down things you see going on in the hood that we do. You know, so that's what it's about, man. Straight up. Here we go. We're out.